Hello, hi, what's up everyone? First of all, Happy New Year. It's me, Karen, your favorite booktuber. And I went out last night, so my voice is a little, I lose my voice very easily. Uh, okay, what are we here for? Top 10 best books of the year, 2023. That's a wrap, we're done, it's over. Books were read, thoughts were had. I read 117 books and I spent a lot of December really stressed. Like, I, I was stressed. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how can I have 10 amazing, incredible, wonderful books that I really want to recommend to you guys. And it was a really tough ask. Not to say that I had a bad reading year. It's just, I don't know. I, I felt a lot of pressure with this. But then I was like, you know what? It's not that deep. It's not that serious. Like, whatever. We're talking about 10 books, 10 fiction books that I read in the year of 2023 that I liked or thought was interesting and wanted to put on your radar. So, in no particular order maybe it's the order that i read them i'm not sure first up we're going to start off with angels by dennis johnson this was johnson's debut novel and this is a story of two misfits we have jamie a single mother of two and bill both of these guys meet on a greyhound bus there's a lot of traveling highways motels seedy bars there's a lot happening and this is really an exploration of america and just the people who kind of get left on the wayside when there's not a lot of opportunities for them. It's a really, it's a really visceral novel, I would say, and I do think it packs a powerful punch at the end, and it's also at the same time an exploration of God, which would make sense in the book since the book is called Angels. But this is a book that I've thought about quite a bit, and I think is really well done. Next up, we have My Husband by Maud Ventura. This book is awesome. I loved it. This book and another one that's going to come up later are the two books that really I think filled me with a lot of joy and are books that I recommended to a lot of people. Not that many people actually ask me about book recommendations to TBH with you guys, but I just thought it was delightful. So this is a story of a woman who is obsessed with her husband, like literally obsessed. She lives in France and we're looking at one week in her life. She keeps a journal and in this journal she also keeps track of her husband's every move. So when he's good, she notes it down. And when he's bad, she really notes it down. And so through that, she then decides how she's going to treat her husband and kind of course correct and try to, you know, get him on the right path. And every single day has a different color. And on that day, she's like really focused on that color. And as the novel progresses, like you might hit a point 50, 60% of the way through where you're like, where is this going? What's happening? But really keep going. It is so good. So fun. And a really interesting look at marriage and that power dynamic that's at play in um, a relationship between two people that's so charged and powerful. Um, okay, next up after that, we have The Birthday Party. This was an international booker long-listed book, and I would say it's a lot of fun. This is a long novel, really uh, intense sentences. Like it, it takes a minute to get into the sentence structure, but then once you're hooked, you're you're there for a ride a wild ride basically this tells a story of a birthday party no surprise where a murder is going to happen a murder is going to happen by the end of the book and i was going to give um spoilers but no i won't do that so we start off looking at this remote french uh hamlet where we have two one family mother daughter father and then their neighbor and the neighbor is receiving threatening letters and it's all going to come to blow at the birthday party for the mother and it kind of i think the novel takes place over 24 hours and it is so good would recommend okay next up we're going to talk about exalted by anna dorn this book is the second book that gave me so much joy this year that i thought was a riot that was hilarious so good so funny would recommend to anyone uh, Exalta tells a story of two women who are unhinged, okay? Um, I know that word has a lot of uh, connotation and meanings these days, but like these ladies are, they're one of a kind. So we have the younger girl, she's like 26 years old, she's an aspiring actress, but is making money by having an astrology meme account, but she like thinks it's all a joke. And then you have, you have Dawn, who's in her 40s, just went through a breakup, and is a wild, like, drinks all the time, says wild shit, gets into fights with people, she's chaotic. Now, somehow, you're reading this novel and you're like, how are these two ladies connected? Like, what's going on? And it's a little bit, 
you know, you just gotta wait for the ride. And I would say that it's, this is like, this is a good book to read if you are in a reading slump, you want something quick and easy and fun and really enjoyable, easily digestible reading and really just, it's so good. It's, uh, I would say, I guess you could say it's like a really astute novel of our times in the sense that, you know, we have the astrology meme maker, we have a quest for fame, a desire for an incredible life just by virtue of being born. I think it's really interesting. Next up, we're going to talk about Burnham Wood. So this book is, tells a story. I've, I feel like I've spoken about it so much, but it's the story of a vigilante a uh, gardening group, New Zealand, who gets involved with an American tycoon, hella wealthy. This book really looks into character and gives you a lot. Like we're getting inside pretty much every single character's head and really like understanding their thought process. It's a lot about um, our current times, crisis, global climate crisis, whatever. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's, it's early, whatever. <laughs> you get the vibes. And I would say it's it's good. It's not really like a thriller to me, right? Like it's not it's not super plotty, but it does have because it's so focused on interiority, but it does have a explosive ending. The next books we're going to talk about are books that I've read uh, mostly in November and December. Interesting. Who would have known that books at the end of the year would have packed such a punch and made it into my best of list? We have My Death by Lisa Tuttle. This is a slim little novel. You can read this in a day. I'm pretty sure I read this in a day. This tells the story of an author who is a widow and she's kind of lost her creative spark. She goes to on a meeting with her editor and or her agent, whatever. <laughs> and while she's there, she's like struck with an idea. She's like, I know what my next book's gonna be about. It's gonna be about a nonfiction book on this artist who uh, was a former muse to some really wealthy, rich painter guy. And what ends up happening is that she discovers that this woman is still alive. She meets up with her and things get trippy. They get creepy. They get meta. It's a very interesting look at um, the life of a muse. It's looking at life, meaning, uh, art, and it's just so trippy really a very trippy book considering how slim it is it is really well done next up we have Marguerite Kemp by Robert Gluck for those of you who don't know Marguerite Kemp is generally considered to be the first author of an autobiography she was a woman in the medieval ages who was married had 14 kids and somehow along the way decides to really devote herself to Jesus and a higher calling and is running around England and Europe going on pilgrimages and experiencing the ire of her community because everyone's like you're really annoying but she was really devout <laughs> and I this this did make me curious to read the autobiography like her book but basically what Robert Gluck does is that he takes this woman's uh, relationship with Jesus and makes it very romantic and fantastical. And at the same time, that story is then mirrored by the story of the author of this book, the author, who is in love with a man. And there's a power dynamic in both of them, right? Because Marguerite in love with Jesus, who is Jesus. And then you have Bob, who's the narrator, who's in love with Elle, who is a uh, young, wealthy, wasp type character who has a lot more of the power in the relationship and you're looking at that and you're looking at love, obsession, death. There's also like this really interesting theme of failure in this book that comes up quite a bit. It's kind of like in the first chapter, I think Marguerite says it like two or three times. So I thought that was really interesting, but it's also a lot about the body and the different ways that the body experiences pleasure, but also some of those base activities that humans have to do. I thought it was a really intriguing novel that had me just, just thinking a lot, thinking all the thoughts. Then this was my final book of 2023. And this is like, this is a pamphlet as my sister would say. So this is Kappa. This is a satirical fable of a 
young man who falls down a hole. I have realized that Japanese literature has a lot of like stories, or at least what gets translated. I've read a few of them of this kind of someone falls down a hole and is taken to another world. So that's what happens here. We have a human who falls into a hole and uh, finds himself spending time with this with this community of kappas. Kappas are like these little creatures. They kind of look like frogs, but frogs are like their enemies and so are otters or whatever. Uh, but this is really just looking at Japanese culture and making observations about it by using like the kappa as the other to kind of explore that relationship. But I would say that it is still, though it's focused on Japanese culture, I do think it's also kind of a conversation about modernity. And this author then committed suicide after writing this. This was his final work. And I thought just having that layer was kind of that added layer of con context was quite interesting when looking at this. And yeah, I would just just check it out. If you're in need of something like quick and small, you're in a reading rut or whatever, this will be interesting. Now we're on to book nine. I haven't been numbering these because I've just been like going with the flow, going with the vibes and seeing where life takes me. So book number nine is a book that I read in January. It was by Darcy O'Brien. It's called A a way of life like any other and Darcy O'Brien was the child of two former actors who whose marriage disintegrates and he basically became an author <laughs> and uh, wrote a lot of nonfiction. however this is his only fiction book and I thought it was really interesting because it shows a very unique life experience to be the child of two former um old Hollywood actors and to come of age in LA at, at that time and it's also a coming of age novel where he's kind of seeing his family go from the wealth that they had to you know the loving marriage of his parents and then that disintegrates and his mother is hunting for her next paramour his father is um kind of lost, turns a lot into bodybuilding and structure and discipline, but they're both just lost souls. And you see how the child is trying to toggle between the two and carve a path of his own. But at the same time, like it's a very slim book and I think it has some really uh, wonderful writing and it's very witty. Now, my next pick, the final one, this was kind of tough because I couldn't really pick a one, so I, I, I did a little something different. I'm gonna have to say that I'm going to give like the 10th spot two McNally editions. I read four McNally books and I couldn't really like pick one that I was like, yeah, this is great, this is incredible, you all need to read it because I do think that all of the books that I read from McNally's, and I'll show them in a second, they really had me questioning the form of the novel, not the form of the novel, they had me questioning the novel and different ways of telling stories and each one of these books gave me something to like tussle with and I think it's hard to really define these books and that's what makes them so interesting is that I think they're not like what's currently on the contemporary literary lit fic market and they give you a lot to think about in terms of you know the novel form conventions and stylistic choices that I think makes these books a highlight of my 2023 reading. So I'm gonna talk about very briefly some of the, the four books that I read from Mc, McNally's. So first up we have The Girls by John Bowen. This is a interesting little book which looks at the life of two women who are in a relationship and end up murdering a guy. But it's also more than that, it's really just like an exploration of British culture and these like well-to-do ladies who live in a village of mostly working class people. Next up we have A Green Equinox. This is the book that is also very much so focused on British people, British people who have a lot of money and too much time on their hands. Our narrator is named Hero. She falls in love. She's having an affair. She then falls in love with her paramour's wife and then mother. So it's just very interesting. The writing is very flowery, ornate, and just unusual. Then we have Lord Jim at Home, which I just read uh, this month in the month, pardon, last month in the month of December, which is a look at once again British culture and we're looking at this boy who kind of goes off the rails in a way that surprises his community but if you really think about it, it makes a lot of sense 
And then finally, we have a McNally's book, which takes us to America. This is Ex-Wife by Ursula Parrott. And here we're looking at this fairly autobiographical debut novel where a young woman gets divorced and is now finds herself with a new title, a new life that she didn't really want. She's an ex-wife. What does that mean to be in New York, to be able to make money on your own and to do kind of whatever you want. You have that freedom. And though this is taking place in the 1920s where we have speakeasies, gin fizz, and we have the glamour and the decadence of the 1920s, it still presents conversations that are very applicable and relevant to 2023 and the way that we live our lives. Of the four books, I'd have to say this one is probably, I think, the strongest, but all of them were interesting to me. Like, I, I'm not going to say that they were it's like hard for me to really pick a favorite, but all those books were just, gave me so much to think about. And though some of them took me longer than others to read, I would have to say I enjoyed the, I enjoyed reading them and I'm really happy I read them. Okay. Wow. Zuh. That was the video. <laughs> those were my top 10 books of 2023. I would love to hear what were your top 10 reads. Um, I did have a request, but I completely forgot what it was. So I'll maybe do it in my uh, 2024 reading plans video. And I'm going to do a nonfiction video. If I don't, please follow up. Keep me accountable. I really need that. And thank you guys so much for another year. I hope 2024 brings us more life, more reading, more writing, more whatever it is that you need. God bless, right? See you later.